This episode of Storytellers is brought to you by these fine companies. Hi, I'm Dale Poldy, the War Eagle. You're watching Storytellers at Competition Plus TV. In, uh, in 77, we built the first War Eagle car, Mike and I. And we came out and I built uh, the car of Joe Mendez, the Eastern Raider, which only ran a couple of races and then all of a sudden it just disappeared. So we're going up the grapevine. My buddy Kevin, Mike and I, we're going up there to go to Bakersfield and see all these detectives taking off up the road. So, Boy, somebody's going to get a good, you know, welcoming somewhere and we're talking about it a little bit. We get the, the racetrack at Bakersfield, we get our car all unloaded and everything. Next thing, they were going after us. The, the detective showed up and they had pictures of Joe Mundette's car and, and, uh, and, I went, and like I told the cop, I says, yeah, I built both cars. You know, Steve Pluger build, builds the cars. I said, there's probably two or three other here just like it. So they looked at stuff and saw things that didn't exactly go with what they uh, had in mind and everything. And, went through the trailer and looked for any parts or any tools or any of the stuff like that. About that time, Joe Paisano comes over, hands the cop his card, and he, he says, I supply pistons to a lot of these cars. I got a twin car to this one. And he said, what seems to be going on here? And he said, I've known this guy a long time. And so they told him you know, what they were looking at. And he says, well, I saw Dale sitting in the one car, getting a brake pedal and all the foot pedals and everything mounted up in the car. I can't understand if it's the same car, why I saw it here just a few months ago with them doing with this car. And uh, the cop was pretty cool about it. They're, they're all nice and everything. And uh, about that time, Steve Pluger walks over. He says, I built this car. I built the other car. You know, I'm, I'm the one. He said, I built several others just like it. They're here. And all of a sudden, the cop basically just, uh, the detective says, you know, we haven't got nothing to go on here. And so he talked to Pluger a little bit more about it. And Pluger says, well, the guy owes me around a thousand dollars, and he said we just assume beat the hell out of him. But my partner doesn't believe in violence, which is if you got if you know Pluger, and he's usually pretty kind of dry and everything, and he talks with that horse horse froggy voice and everything, and it was it was uh, really kind of a classic moment. So we finally get the car up in line and we run it. And the car runs. I'm pretty sure it ran 603, which at that time was a pretty darn good run, especially for a car that only been to a couple of races. Well, they wouldn't give it to us. They thought the car rolled the lights and because they didn't know much about the car and hadn't seen it in the typical John Durbin type of race. And uh, they, weren't, they wouldn't give us the run. So we come back and went up there for the next qualifying run. The car goes out there and it shakes like crazy. And then all of a sudden it just noses over and burns the motor up in the thing. So, wow. So we fixed it, but we went through the whole race after that, hurting it every single run. So they come to the final round, and we made it that far. I'm going to race Eddie Pauling driving Johnny Loper's car, who had run extremely well through the whole race. So semi-final round, we hurt the block. We hurt a bunch of other stuff on it and everything, and I, I, we couldn't fix it. But we knew we could go out and make the burnout and do what we had to do. It just probably wouldn't make a run. I said, well, Mike and I talked about it. So let's just go up and see if he red lights or does something. We'll, I'll go out and shut it off. So as it was, I went out there, left the starting line. Then I saw him shoot out there. Like he was going to run good, and we weren't. And I shut her off. As I shut her off, I see Loper's car go out there, and the car up in a wheel stand, the body fly off the thing. So I went on down the track. So Mike and the rest of the crew come on down there, and they said, uh, you crossed the center line. I says, I didn't go far enough or move enough to actually cross the center line. I don't, I don't get that. Well, a race prior to that, same car, in one of the rounds, crossed the center line in front of me, took all the paint off the front of our car. We had to get it refixed. And uh, Garlitz told me, he says, you know, he says, you ever have that happen again? This is after the Phoenix problem. If you ever have it ha happen again, don't let any other cars run because that gives them a chance to say, oh, those are your tire tracks. And uh, so we went right up and they're getting ready to start the two top fuel final cars and park where they couldn't do anything, and I walked out on the track and everything. John Durbin runs up, starts screaming and yelling at me and all this junk. And I got my fire boots on, got my, my fire suit half on, and he takes the shove in me, 
to push me away to get back, you know, get out of there. Well, I had my, all my stuff on. I stumble and I start to fall over. So I start to fall over. I grabbed a hold of him and yanked him down with me. And we started at it for a couple of minutes. Next thing you know, there's a picture somewhere in the, the he had a bunch of college football players or whatever, wherever they were from. Those are all his bodyguards and help and all the stuff. There's a pile on there, probably 15 guys on there. And uh, you can see my fire boots sticking out. So I, I, everybody starts getting off and on, getting the pile all straightened out and all this stuff. And then here's Mike Hamby who had arms like crazy on him. And he had John Durbin in a headlock. And I thought he was going to tear his head off. I mean, he was, I thought his head was going to pop. And so I finally got that all straightened out. And uh, as it was, we didn't win. <laughs> we didn't win the argument either. But uh, yeah, that was the famous Bakersfield fight and argument and stuff. And every once in a while through the year, we hear somebody, uh, oh, Paul Smith for one of them, he uh, come by the car in English Town. He says, boy, that thing runs real good for a stolen car. And uh, boy, Hamby lit off. He was not happy about that. And you know, we're, we're getting used to all, this, all the trouble from it anyway. And then we are trying to have the car up for sale. And it's a national dragster, and a guy calls me from Texas. He knows about it. Knows the car ran more, runs over 240 than any of them, and uh, it ran 240 almost everywhere. So the guy says, "Well, he says I've been talking to Billy Meyer about buying his car and everything." I said, "Well, it's almost the identical car." He says, "Yeah, but he told me it was all right." He says, uh, "Well, that's a good, a good car." He said, "If you want to buy a stolen car, <laughs> so <laughs> it it, uh, it was kind of good. We got rid of that car." But I ended up having to borrow it back to have it duplicated because the, the next new one we had just wasn't the same car. I'm Dale Poldy, a comp, ah oh, shoot. I'm Dale Poldy, the War Eagle. You're watching Storytellers of Competition Plus TV. Guess the t-shirts were more important than we were at the time. But at Mike, he, he was. Bob, Bob. Bob, upstairs, go on, go night night. Bob, I'll get him up. Oh, we, you know, we toughed it out and everything worked out really well. And, uh, <laughs> shit, I forgot where I was going. You're going with the bristles. Oh, so. oh, yeah. And about that time, the mechanic comes. You, you gotta do your, your, you gotta do I, the, the dialect. Too. I will, I will. Oh, I'm sorry. I am. I'm sorry. As a, I'm sorry. Start over. I'm sorry. Start over from where? From